and then he's also going to take his hand off of the wrath and you know he will come back and he will judge and you know people will stand before him and give an account of their lives and believers will spend eternity with him in a new heaven a new earth in a glorious body there won't be any more pain or suffering or any of these YouTubing and you know for unbelievers you know because they refuse to receive him they will spend eternity in a place called hell and that's what's hard for people to believe they don't they don't want to believe that so therefore they just say the Bible isn't true um, and that breaks my heart because the Bible is written by God through men and the Bible doesn't lie and it's God's mercy right now that he's extending to all sinners um, through the cross and then to walk in newness of life through the Word and Holy Spirit. Um, so, you know, here we go. The love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this, that one has died for all and therefore all have died. And died, and uh, he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. So, you know, I used to live for me. And that's what everybody does, because that's what the world says. That's what the flesh says. Live, eat, drink, and be merry. You've got free will. God gave you a brain. You know, do what you want you know, make your own life. I mean, it's all about self-centeredness. But when God gives a new nature, you know, that changes all. It's living for Christ in the way I think, the way I speak, and the way that I do. And, you know, not just so that I can be free, but God also calls me to be his ambassador, to go out and, and to make Christ known. So that's why I'm doing this YouTube thing because God chose me and I said yes. Um, ah, so I'm, I'm grateful that God chose me to do this because um, it's in my heart and I know what it is to live in the darkness. I didn't know what dark was until I knew what light was. What I used to think was light was darkness and that's the deception of sin and being separated from God. So everything that I tell you right now will never register in logic or emotion ever because faith is not logic and it's not emotion. It's, it's believing. And then the truth begins to grow once, I, once a person believes and begins to hear the Word of God and ask God to change our heart. He doesn't withhold. He does. You know, and, and it's a whole new life. So, you know, I once was lost and now I'm found. I once was dead and now I'm alive. I once was a sinner doomed to eternal hell. And now I am a sinner saved by grace. And God calls me a saint because the sin I used to love, I hate. Um, and that's the difference between a sinner and a saint doesn't mean I'm floating around with angel wings. It doesn't mean I'm not tempted. It doesn't mean I don't have struggles. It doesn't mean that I don't have to work anymore or, <laughs> you know, that I don't have to pay bills anymore or I don't have to, you know, humble myself anymore and seek God's help. No, I still do. But it's different because the source of my life is Jesus Christ. And I stay connected to him through the word and the Holy Spirit helps me. Whereas before, I was just like everybody else. I was just dead in my sin and had no clue how much I needed a savior until I knew. Um, so the body of Christ, we're talking about the church. The church is not a building. The church is... The church building is filled with imperfect people. There are people in the church building that are not believers. They're just religious. 
and there are people in the church building who are born again who are working out their salvation and being changed as the Word of God changes them through the power of the Holy Spirit so you know the church isn't just about going and sitting like plastic people in pews listening to some preacher you know preach you know the preacher is just a, a sinner saved by grace too if he is if he's not then he's a false teacher and you know if you know the word you'll know false teachers because when you know the word the word is in you truth is in you and you're able to know if somebody is a false prophet or a false teacher um, so I don't go to the church building now to be saved you know I go to worship with the body of Christ and some people are unbelievers and I'm I'm worshiping with unbelievers too even though people don't know they're unbelievers because they may be caught up in that religious spirit of the rituals well I go to church or I've gone to church all my life and that that right there in itself lets you know that they're not saved because we don't go to church we go to worship as the body and we you know we we realize our brokenness uh, and we realize our need to hear truth so we we pray that the gifts that God gives in the body that work together to help build up our faith and build up the body of Christ uh, into maturity you know not perfection but maturity yeah I mean there is a maturity as, as the body of Christ individually hears the word and is convicted and our minds begin to change we think different we we don't think say and do the things that we used to do because the Holy Spirit changes us and those things we used to desire we don't desire anymore um, you know any type of afflictions in the church and you know there's all kinds there's adultery that can go on be going on I mean nobody follows people home nobody knows the true heart of people except God and so you know there could be you know there are divorces that take place in the church there's adultery that takes place there's pornography you know God doesn't say oh goody I that's a good thing you know um, God doesn't approve of that but it does take place and unless there's a repentant heart and unless the person goes to God and repents and asks God to help them you know they'll give in to those temptations and just keep doing it so um, <sighs> that's a whole new youtuber for how to overcome by self-feeding we're going to talk about self-feeding um, you know when you're a baby you get fed by a caregiver but there comes a time you got to pick up the spoon and start self-feeding yourself and so we're going to talk about that later but not now um okay so he goes on to say from now on therefore we regard um no one according to the flesh even though we once regarded christ according to the flesh we regard him thus no longer Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation, Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. 
For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So, gosh, you know, the ministry of reconciliation, it, it means we share that God, the gospel is about the cross, that the Father so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now, you know, nobody bent his arm. Like, he loved the world. That he, he created the world for good. I mean, read Genesis. You know, he did this and it was good. He created the heavens and the earth. He saw that it was good. Then he decided to create man. He saw that it was good. So, you know, it was all good. And, you know, he just said to Adam and Eve, Mankind, woman and man, don't eat of the fruit of the tree of good and evil, the tree of knowledge, for at that time you will die. And he meant that they would die spiritually and be separated from him. And also, they would die a physical death because he can't have fellowship with, with unholiness and rebellion and, you know, um... But they did. <laughs> and go figure how all that works. I don't know. I used to question God a lot about that, but I realized that God's ways are not my ways. His thoughts are not my thoughts. Everything's higher. He's creator. I'm not. I'm not his counsel. I'm not equal to him. Uh, I'm not above him. So, you know... I learned to just, I came to um, resolve that I'm the creature and that he is the creator and that now because of being born again in the spirit, I'm a new creature. If you had known me, sometimes I wish that I had pictures of who I was and you could have heard me and just go back in time and I could just show you who I was. You know, it was very selfish and self-centered and, you know, was focused on, had many gods that were not God. What I thought was peace and security and happiness was not it. So, you know, outward beauty, clothes, being sexy, having the right body, you know, which is what the lusts of the flesh is about. And, you know, doing things the way I want it to. You know, not telling people, I'm sorry. That's pride. So, you know, all of that is of the fallen nature of the flesh. And when God reconciles and people receive him, then he restores us to right relationship with him through Christ Jesus. And he does that by giving us that a nature in his image. You know, a nature of love and kindness and goodness and... Um, faithfulness and just it's a trust it's a trust that God is good and that God is faithful and that God is you know when God does a work in me that convicts me brings me to repentance you know where I weep with godly sorrow and then I thank him with tears of joy for his mercy and his help to turn away from the things that I used to, you know, think were love and life. I mean, it's it's an amazing experience. It's it's a it's a return to truth. It's a return to life. It's a return to love. Um, in its pure sense. Um, I'm still in the car. <laughs> I did the last YouTube thing sitting in this car. Um, so I guess maybe I'm going to get out and walk because I want to do that. And let me say, if there's anything else here. Um, whew. Okay.
well. I am going to get my little hair thing, pull it back. So bear with me for that. <laughs> Oops, got a picture of my stomach. <laughs> and I turn on the car, roll up my windows. See, window roll up. So again, you know, um, <laughs> a lady friend of mine who is a mature believer talked about being a Christian, the Christianese, talking Christianese. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I just, that just went into my soul because my thoughts, my soul is my thoughts <laughs> and my emotions because I thought, oh my gosh, yeah, God help us to not be in this Christianese thinking. Um, that's why I've asked God to help me take the spooky and the weird out of the language of the Bible and the kingdom of God. Because once there's this relationship with God through Christ Jesus, it's no longer weird and it's no longer spooky. It's uh, really the language that God always wanted us to return to um, the language that was taken away from us in the garden. Um, of course, back then, we didn't have the words repentance and born again because before sin, mankind was in our perfect nature, Adam and Eve, were, you know, we're supposed to uh, have dominance over everything in the in the garden and the animals, and you know, because they were made in the image of God. They were pure, and <laughs> they had communion with God and talked with Him every day, and so there was no no separation. So it was a it was a pure thinking, pure speaking, and pure behaving. I mean, it's like, what was that like? <laughs> you know, there was no sin. I mean, it was perfect. The weather was perfect. They didn't have clothes on. Imagine that. Right now, when we think of naked, we think, oh. But back then, there wasn't any shame. So, naked wasn't, didn't mean, like, naked. They were just beautiful creatures in their bodies. And they were to, you know, multiply. And, uh, but then all that changed. And so then there became an unholy language, which was the language of the sinful nature. And so that became familiar to sinners. So, to be born again is where <laughs> what was supposed to be familiar <laughs> is now familiar. And all that, un and all that familiar language <sighs> that was not God's will dies and <sighs> we just have a different heart. And it's truly God given us a, a new heart. And the heart is really, you know, a clean heart, a purity, and a new spirit. <sighs> it's just weird sometimes <laughs> walking here among people <sighs> and thinking how many people here are, have heard the gospel how many are born again? How many know that they're born again? And how many are unashamed to say they're born again? 
how many don't know that they need to be born again. <sighs> so, I'm trying to think of, you know, so was that incident with Peter and, oh, I think of, I think of like, oh, let's just go with Mary Magdalene. So when Jesus was, God was in the flesh as Jesus, there was this woman who had seven demons in her and her name was Mary from Magdalena. And uh, I don't know the real history of her background, but she was actually possessed by demons. And oh, I don't know of like what she was like in terms of her everyday living. I have no idea if she like prostituted her body or was abused by men. I have no idea. But what I do know is that when Jesus saw her, had compassion on her, she was an outcast. She was mocked and rejected. And when Jesus touched her and those demons left her, she became a new woman and a new nature. And she followed Jesus. And uh, she thought different. She spoke different. She acted different. And of course, the people knew that had known her, knew who she used to be, and knew that she was totally changed. So it goes back again to, I once was a woman obsessed, obsessed, possessed with demons, and now I'm not. The blind man, I once was blind, and all I know is that now I see. And so that's my story too. It's like I, I once was spiritually blind, and now I spiritually see. Yeah, I once was self-centered, and lived only for me. And now I'm Christ-centered, have the mind of Christ and live for Him. There's no explanation other than Jesus. That Jesus receives all who believe and then He changes us in the way that only he can change us. Everyone's testimony, everyone's testimony from darkness to light, from unbelief to belief, from born of the flesh to born of the spirit is different. They're all different. And that's because we were all different people born of the flesh and we all had different parents, different genetics, different life experiences, but we all were encountered by Jesus and became changed. And that's why it's the Holy Spirit regenerating. No psychologist, I've been to many psychologists, and it wasn't that they didn't have psychology knowledge of you know, the way you think and going back into your childhood and all that. But they didn't change me. I needed a supernatural touch of Jesus through the Holy Spirit. And that's what changed me. No psychiatrist who had diagnosed me. You know, I've had diagnoses of, you know, manic depressive and uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, I say borderline personality I mean I had all those psychological labels on me <laughs> and you know 
being in the medical field myself as a speech pathologist, I understand that those labels are given to try to put some some uh, sense into why people think, speak, and act the way they do. And so, you know, they draw from, they've come up with, uh, you know, a medical book of labels. <laughs> and so, uh, I get that, you know, and I get medications. Medications are often necessary to help as much as possible with the mental and emotional condition. But when Jesus heals, when Jesus delivers, and Jesus puts a new nature, there is no diagnosis anymore because there's a, a new heart, a new mind. The soul is at peace and full of joy. And the body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. So, all those illnesses become healed. Uh, I was emotionally tormented. And I can honestly say that's what it was like. I would go into great depression. I would have these highs and lows. You know, I mean, drama, yeah. I was in a lot of drama with all those highs and lows. You know, my mind was full of depravity and lies and deceptions and my body had been defiled. And I was very broken. But when Jesus encounters, when he encountered the woman at the well, she was changed. When he encountered Saul of Tarsus, the persecutor of Christians, he was changed. When he encountered Mary Magdalena, she was changed. When he encountered Peter, the arrogant fisherman, he was changed. You now, Jesus is the game changer. <laughs> Let's put it that way in this culture's words. You know, the game changer is Jesus because he changes not the outside, but the inside. He puts in a new heart that is made to be sensitive and responsive to his holy touch. He renews the mind with truth through his word and Holy Spirit. He restores the soul to peace and joy. And he makes the body the temple of his Holy Spirit. So this is the body of Christ. This is the church. I uh, don't know if there's anything else. It's a beautiful day out here. Look. Beautiful. Uh, and it's cool. So it's a good day for walking, not sweating. Uh, oh, what else can I say, God? Is there anything else? Is there anything else? Oh, I just pray if you are de churched, I go to Catalyst in Northwest Arkansas. I mean, and it's not about the building, but whew, uh, the servant leaders in this church are about coming back to Christ from the heart and to life-changing experiences to be disciples and to make disciples to... Oh, to take a journey as a body to be delivered from any oppressions 
any lies, deceptions, and by the grace of God to be changed into a new nature. Uh, so if you are de-churched, the invitation is to ask God to lead you to a church body where the heart is right, where there is no false teaching, it has nothing to do with the size of the church or building or the name that's across the church. If it's a denominational or non-denominational, it doesn't matter. God is after the heart. And that comes through hearing the word, self-feeding in the word, spending time with the word, asking God to do the work in us that only he can do, and watching this miraculous new nature <laughs> rise up. <sighs> so, this morning when I went to worship, and again, I call it worship. I don't go to church. I go to worship with the body of Christ. So when I went, I asked God to open up my heart to hear what he wanted me to hear, to search my heart, and that if there be anything in there that is not of his love and his will to, to remove it by grace, to bring me to repentance of it, and then by his grace to walk in newness of life. Um, yeah. So, I want to show you this. This is a little chapel. Yeah, I've been in there before. It's real sweet and quaint to have weddings in there. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Oh gosh. Okay. So there's one more. Okay, so in August, God put me in what's called Global Influencers Ministry. Amazing. Uh, Ooh. I guess all I can say is to go online, look up global influencers, I think .org, and uh, <laughs> anyway, I've gathered with a body of women on Zoom, <laughs> led by a woman out of California, 